We created these roofs using the roof generator. Now let's look at some of these standard roof shapes. So I'm just going to save this as a different project. So I'll go to File, Save Project As, and let's call this Standard Roofs. Okay, so we just made a copy of this project, and then I'm going to delete this roof here. It's actually just a roof sketch, but we'll delete that. So I'm going to come here and select the gable shape. And whenever you run one of these standard roof shapes, it gives you a preview picture indicating the points that you need to select and the order that you need to select them in order to get the shape and the orientation that you want. So this is indicating that points 1 and 2 are the gable end and points 2 and 3 are the eave. And when we do it in the counterclockwise direction, we'll make sure that the roof is sloping up instead of down. So with this layout, I'm just going to imagine that this is in the same orientation as our preview picture. Otherwise, you kind of have to do some mental gymnastics to rotate it in your head. Um, and I'm going to start up in this top left corner. And to get that first point, I'm going to cue off of this framing corner. So I'm going to hold my cursor here and hit Q. That sets the reference point. And now what we want to do is go to the left some distance and up some distance. So to the left, I'm going to go minus, and let's say it'll be 6 inch overhang at the gable end. And then I'll hit comma to jump over to the Y field, or you can just click on the Y field. And we're going to go up, so it's going to be a positive number. I'll go up 12 inches. Hit enter, and so it makes that first point selection there. I'm going to constrain in the vertical direction, so I can just click on that dashed line or hit I on the keyboard. We'll come down to the bottom left corner. I'm going to cue on this point again, so I'm going to hit set a new reference point from here, and then ex keep extending down, and now I'm just going to type in the distance that I want to go down. So in this case, I want the overhang on the bottom to be 12 inches, so I'll just type in 12. So that's my point 2. Now I'll lock in horizontal, come over to here, set a reference point at this corner, so Q, keep going over, and then we'll do 6 inches at the other gable end. So type in 6, enter, makes the third point selection, and then opens the roof parameters form. So again, with uh, just like we did with the roof generator, you can choose if you're doing truss framing or rafter framing. And you get a slightly different form here on how it's going to calculate the height of the roof. So I'll stick with the truss framing. We could select the roof system again. Uh, again, I, I recommend if you're doing truss framing, select a roof system that matches the thickness of the top cord. Uh, if you're doing rafter framing, then you can select the roof system that has the size of the rafters that you're going to be generating. The pitch. You can set as an angle using the capital A, or you can do a ratio. So if you want to do like an 8-12 pitch, we'll do that. And if you want the ends of the top cords of the trusses to be cut all the way through, then just set the fascia height to be uh, a large enough value. So it's going to cut all the way through and choose if you want to do vertical, perpendicular, or you can actually do a 45 degree bevel in this case. I'm going to get the plate height from the 3D model. So I hit Get, 3D, click on the wall. So that updates the value, which it actually already had the same value, so nothing changed. Um, the overhang, we already selected as being 12 inches in the front and back. And then we'll keep the 6 inch butt cut. So recalculate that eave height, which updated a little bit because we changed the slope. And then we click OK and in comes our gable roof. So I hit escape, hit F2 to switch to the 3D model, and there it is. Now we can use the same function to add any turn gables on top of this, like if we want to add some dormers. So let's go back to the 2D. I'll run the same gable function. So this time I have to imagine that this thing is going to be rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise if we're going to put gables on the front or the bottom edge here. 
So my point one is going to be some distance in. Let's set this as our reference point here. So I'll queue on that, lock it horizontal, and then type in the distance. So let's say we want to come over, oh, let's say about 10 feet. So I'll type in 10 apostrophe, enter. So there's my point one. Then I'm going to go continue in the horizontal direction. And let's go another 10 feet. And then I'm going to extend this back into the house. So I'm going to lock in vertical. And now how far back really doesn't matter because we're going to trim it once this is in place. So I'm just going to select the, the ridge line here. Now, the height is going to be a little bit different here. Um, because we're not setting this on a wall just yet, what we're going to do is enter the value for the eave height. And that's going to control how high that roof is going to sit. So instead of calculating it, I'm just going to enter that value. So let's say this is going to be 150 inches. And I'm going to give this a, a lower slope here. So let's go with the 412 pitch. And click OK. And then I'll escape, see what it looks like in the 3D model. So now I have this roof going right through our main roof. And I'm going to copy that over before we start playing around with it. So let's see if I can select it. There's one. I'm going to hold down the control key, grab the other one, right click, and we'll select copy. Grab a reference point here. Lock in horizontal. And let's say I'm going to let's set this as a reference point here. Keep going over. And let's give it, oh, let's say about six feet in between. I'm making this up as we go. So now I have two. So we have a couple of different choices on how we're going to trim these roofs into the main slope. We can either make a false stormer and keep the main roof running underneath it, or we can actually cut the hole out so that you have a true dormer. So first, let's start with the true dormer. I'm going to hold the control key and select these two cable slopes. And then up in the plane structure tab, we have this menu for clip slopes. And the first one allows you to clip two sets of slopes together. So when I start this function, it's asking for the second group of slopes that we're going to be clipping. So the first two slopes were the first group, and now the main slope is the second group. So I left clicked on that, and then I'm going to hit confirm. I get a warning about trying to clip roofs that have been expanded, but that's OK. We'll click yes. And then I'm prompted on how we want to complete the cut lines. So the manual option will highlight each section and ask if you want to keep that section or delete that section. The automatic will just go ahead and do it automatically. In some more complicated situations, you might want to run the manual function, but in this case, the automatic will work well. Now I'm going to select the other two dormer roofs and use the next clip slope function where only the first group is clipped. So I select the main slope as the second group, confirm, click yes on this warning, and now I have both roofs are clipped into the main roof where one has cut out the main roof and the second one has not. There's another way that you can trim roofs into other roofs by using the Trim Edge command. So I'll select a roof and then right click on the center grab point of an edge and select Trim Edge. So now I'm going to click on the surface that I'm going to trim that into. The difference here is the way it trims the edge into the main slope. In this case, it cuts it at an angle that matches the slope of that surface. So I'll repeat and do it to the other side. 
sometimes this works out better depending on how you're going to be framing it and making that connection. Now let's add a different kind of standard roof shape. So I'll switch to the 2D. Make sure we're on the roof layout drawing model pair. I'll go back up to the roof menu. And this time let's select this mono slope. So a single shed roof. And here we're getting our preview picture. It's a little different. Points one and two are the corners on the low end. And then point three can be anywhere along the high edge of that roof slope. So let's say I want to add a slope coming down here off the front of my house. I can set a reference point. So I'll cue on this point. And then we'll go to the right. Let's say 96 inches. And then we're going to come down a negative, oh, let's say 48 inches. So that makes our point one. Now lock and horizontal. We'll go across the width of the roof to my point two. So let's say, let's go to about here. It looks like about uh, 14 feet. So I'll type in 14 apostrophe, enter. So those are my points one and two. And then point three will be anywhere along that top edge. It's automatically gonna create a rectangle. So I'll come up here and snap to somewhere on that framing line. So again, I can choose the roof system that we're going to use, the slope. Let's make this a low slope. Let's go with 212, the fascia height, how you want to cut, and then we're going to determine how high this is going to be. So again, kind of like with the turn gables, uh, we're not really putting this on a wall, so we don't have to do the plate height, overhang, and calculate the eave height. We can just tell it what the eave height is going to be. So in this case, I'm going to put in Oh, I'm kind of guessing here, let's say around 90 inches, and then click OK. So I'll hit Escape, switch to the 3D, and then we'll see where our roof is. And now I can adjust this. You can either use the Move command if you want to change the height. You can also come up here and use this Edit Slope function, and that takes us back to the parameters. So if I want to change the slope, let's make this a 412. And then let's lower this a little bit. Let's bring this down to, let's say, oh, 85 inches. Yeah, I can do that again. Let's see if we can make it a little bit lower. Let's make it 72 inches. There we go. So that height is to this point of the roof. So that is the low end. And then we can use the trim function if we want to trim the edge of that to the face of the wall. We can also change the shape of this front eave. If I right click on that front edge, I can select Edit Edge Shape, right click, and then we can choose if we're just going to do a perpendicular fascia cut, vertical fascia cut, horizontal, we can do some set angle. We have the fascia at a certain height that's perpendicular, and then we have the fascia that's vertical at a certain height. So for example, if I do this one, I can enter in a height. So in this case, I'm gonna do something a little bit less than the six inches. Let's go with four inches. So we have this vertical part is four inches, and then it just horizontal cuts the rest of it and gives you that rafter shape there. So the process is very similar for the rest of these shapes. You get a preview picture, you just kind of follow the directions, and then you get the shape that you want.